Hi everybody, it's your ShopRite wellness partner, Shelby RD. And today I am taking the trend of building charcuterie boards out of anything and really taking it to a fun level that is especially good for entertaining and especially good if you're hungry for some lean protein. We are making a grilled seafood charcuterie board and it really is going to be something that wows your guests. We are incorporating some different elements to get that smoky grill flavor while also utilizing a couple different kinds of seafoods that are really easy to kind of have on hand and pick for a party. So what I'm going to start with though is one of our condiments that we are going to use for dipping on our seafood and that is a nice seasoned butter. So I already have some butter melting in a pan. I did one stick. Now I will tell you, if you want to make extra of this butter, it's probably not a bad idea because it would be really delicious if you grilled it on some crostini or even if you grilled some additional seafood in it like scallops, if you want to serve that or um, even salmon or another white fish, you can make extra and this will be delicious to use for extra seasoning on the grill. But for today, we're just making it for our board. So I have one stick of butter. Then the recipe calls for three cloves of garlic. I always just throw in an extra clove for good luck. So we're doing four. There really, I don't think is a limit when it comes to garlic. So I'm just mincing that up. We're gonna let it sit in the butter a little bit. So it's really gonna melt down in there, which is why you wanna have the heat on low because otherwise your butter is going to brown, which isn't a bad thing. It gives it more of a nutty flavor but not exactly what we're going for for this recipe. Okay, so I'm going to take back garlic, put it in my butter, and she goes. Naturally, it already smells delicious. Okay, and then I'm going to add um, a teaspoon and a half to two teaspoons of lemon juice. Again, your typical flavors that you would use for your seafood. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of parsley, and if you have different herbs growing in a garden, you could play with this. Uh, parsley is definitely your most traditional herb, I think, for seafood. But you can utilize maybe some rosemary if you like that flavor. Basil is going to give it a little bit more of an Italian flair. Parsley is definitely going to be the most clean, but you want some green in there. And lastly, we're just going to add a little bit of Old Bay seasoning, very classic seafood seasoning blend. All right, and then you're just gonna let that simmer for the flavors to infuse. All right, so after five minutes of letting the butter melt and all of those flavors come together, we're gonna put it into one of our glass dishes and that's going to be one of our dipping sauces. So if you're thinking of kind of a traditional charcuterie board, you normally have your spreads like an apricot jam. So you think of your seasoned butter as kind of your apricot jam of the grilled seafood charcuterie board. And I think you can see just from all those delicious aromatic flavors, and I'm sure if you could smell it, you're gonna know you wanna make extra of that butter sauce. All right, so there we go. So you can see I have already steamed um, some crab legs and I've steamed some mussels. I have some more on the stove over here. So we are going to work on our shrimp. So again, because this is a charcuterie board and we're thinking of people picking it up, and eating it, I like to go for the bigger shrimp. So that's why I am using the bowl and basket extra colossal easy peel. Looking for our easy peels are wonderful because getting that shrimp in its whole form, that shell is going to give it so much flavor and you can actually save those shells, which I'm gonna to toss them into a spare bowl and you can make some shrimp stock, which you can freeze and then you know, on some colder days, make a really nice seafood risotto if you're feeling fancy. So with these, you just push on the skin and it's gonna come right off, super simple. And again, save those skins and you're just gonna boil them in some water to make that shrimp stock. And if your kids aren't squeamish and they wanna get involved and nobody has a seafood allergy, then this is a really fun way to get them involved in the cooking process. So once you're done peeling your shrimp, you're gonna take some olive oil, splash that on. Now I'm doing a little bit of a different seasoning for the shrimp as the recipe entails. 
if you want to with a little bit of the butter or the extra butter you can absolutely cook the shrimp in this butter because it's obviously going to be delicious but i'm just going to add a little bit more old bay to the shrimp that are now coated with that olive oil and then a little bit of salt and pepper i find with shrimp the dried seasonings work really nicely because it gives it a nice crispy crust and you have to watch when you're marinating shrimp because anything that has acid in it is going to start cooking the shrimp and you don't want to cook them before they get on the heat because we're not making ceviche. That's actually how you make ceviche is you let citrus juice cook your shrimp. Now we're just gonna put them on our pan and give them a couple minutes on each side. And my little tip for cooking your shrimp is if they start to curl where when they're cooked, they're like this. That means overcooked. O for overcooked. We want to stay a C-shaped for cooked. Okie dokie. So they're only going to take about two to three minutes on each side because these are a little bit thicker shrimp. If you're using smaller ones, they'll probably only need a minute or two on each side. And if you are going to cook your shrimp on the grill, then they really aren't going to take much time. As our shrimp finish up, we're going to cook one more thing, and that is our lovely corn for our charcuterie board. So we wanna have something other than the main event, something other than the seafood. So you could see, we put some oyster crackers on here, and we're gonna grill up some corn. So what I like to do for grilling corn, so you're gonna take some foil. I'm gonna take three pieces off, because I have three ears here. And I like to do it this way, because if you put the corn directly on the grill, it's likely you might get some, you know, too much charring on the outside and you're not actually gonna cook the corn kernels. They're gonna dry out a little bit. So if you cover it in the foil, it's just gonna help it cook a little bit more evenly without overcooking. And you'll still get those grill marks that you want um, on the corn. So we're just going to wrap those up. Depending on how high of heat your grill gets, if you know it has certain hot spots, you might wanna use two pieces or a heavy duty foil, but if you can keep it on low, then you'll be just fine. And you're just gonna put that on the grill. And then every couple of minutes, you're going to turn it um, and rotate it. So that way it gets evenly cooked. We have this delicious shrimp. I'm gonna place it on our board. And I really, as I'm looking at this, I highly recommend going with those extra colossal shrimp so that you get those nice, big, delicious pieces for people to pick. And then I'm going to take my mussel pot of these mussels and just fill that in a little bit. And actually, anytime I see mussels, I think about, I actually got to, with some other ShopRite associates, go to Chile and see where we get our mussels. So I got to see them. They actually grow deep into the water on these ropes and they pull the ropes up and that's where all the mussels are. And I have to say it was one of the coolest things. I always love seeing where food comes from and it really was such a cool thing to see how those ropes come up and then they go through a machine that pulls it off the ropes, almost like the way that you would pull rosemary or thyme off of a sprig. It's almost like that's how the machine pulls the ropes, uh, pulls the mussels off the ropes, which is very cool. Alrighty. So let me just finish up by pouring some of our cocktail sauce in here. I need a lot of that for my shrimp. And there you go. A really simple but so spectacular looking board to entertain. And one of the things I love about this is it's going to be a platter that helps to get your guests full. It's not full of snacks that aren't going to keep you full. There's so much delicious really lean good. protein and nutrients in all of these seafood choices. It's going to make for a really delicious platter. If you enjoyed this recipe, make sure to like this video and follow us for more. Alrighty. So let me just finish up by pouring some of our cocktail sauce in here.